you can have a job, you can have independency as a person, whether you're a woman or a man. And that's why most marriages, not only in developing countries, even in a developing country, everybody is working. That's why you see marriage don't work. Because God created a woman to be submissive, but so submissiveness lack. The respect for man lack, and the love for woman is not there. The principle of marriage is not there. Because long time men used to work and bring money, bring wages. So the woman, even if he's going difficult time or he wanna go, he can he, he go to his home, he's told by his friend, go back, you're coming here to eat what? He doesn't have a job, so marriage used to work because men are working. But nowadays, everybody is, is earning money everywhere in the whole world. Woman is earning, man is earning. Marriage doesn't work. Because, especially when I was in uni, all oh, professor women, the one are not married. Why? What is man telling me? I have a job, I have a car, I have a, I can, I have a good job. What can a man tell me? But that's not how God created marriage. Woman should be submissive. That's what see many professors as a, in my country, they were not married. Professors and doctors, lecturers, they were not married, the women. What can a man tell them? And if they are married, they can't cope. But we have those who are genuine and they make to live. Stand their marriage, those who know the Bible. Not, I'm not, everything is generalization. We have exceptional. We have doctors and professor women who stand their marriage. We have rich people who worship God. We have rich people who build church by themselves. They buy cars, they buy buses for the church. They know God. We have exemption. If you know God, whether you are rich or not, you will make it. You will not be affected. Nothing can affect your faith, whether you are rich or not. Paul was saying, whether I have or not, I will be, I stand to be contented. I am con contented with whatever I have. Whether I have money or not, the faith is the same. Mother and Mary, faith was affected. When their brother died, they didn't see Jesus anymore. They didn't see Jesus as a heal, as a resurrector. They, their, they, their faith was affected when their brother died. They said, Jesus, you didn't come. Our brother died. But they forgot Jesus can resurrect their brother. Their faith was limited. But our God power is unlimited. Power of God is unlimited. But Mother and Mary, they saw Jesus as a healer. When their brother died, they said, Jesus, they were angry and they were crying. Your brother has died. Jesus was delayed to come two days. And our brother died. Their faith was short-lived up to healing. If Jesus did not come to heal, we don't believe in Jesus anymore. No, he's not good. But he, Jesus can go beyond the healing. He resurrected Lazaro. People, we have people who are rich. Their faith is not affected. They were poor, they were Christian. They were rich, they were Christian. Just as Jesus was saying, believe in me, whether your brother die or not, I can, I'm beyond death, I can heal him, I can resurrect him. Whether you, you have a dead marriage, believe I can resurrect it. Whether you have a dead career, believe I can resurrect it. We have people who are poor, and when they were rich, they are still standing. There are people who are in, the, in a poor country, they went to developed country, they are still standing. In the poor country, they were Christian. In when they went to Canada, they were Christian. When they were in Kenya, they were Christian. When they went to Canada, they are still Christian. They were Christian when they were in Uganda. When they went to UK, they are still Christian. But Jesus saw, Jesus saw many people, when they get rich, they forget God. And that's why Jesus was saying, it is very hard for a rich man to go to heaven. It's as hard as camera going through the needle. As a donkey or a camel go through the needle hole. It's very hard. How can a camel or a donkey go through an, a hole of a needle, the sewing needle? Jesus said a rich man is very hard to enter heaven. The same Jesus saying in Deuteronomy, many people, he saw when people they change the status. They build good houses. They go to developed countries. They come from Kenya, they go to America. They come from Kenya, they go to Australia. They come from Kenya, they go to Britain. They come from Kenya, they go to Canada. They come from Tanzania, they go to France. 
they come from Congo, they go to Germany, most likely they will forget God because those countries develop, they are rich. You don't have problem, they will forget me. And he said in Deuteronomy, when you are rich, when you go to those beautiful countries, when you build houses, when your business expand and you are rich, don't forget me. But many forget God. Many forget their God. There are so many who forget God when their status changes, when they get a visa. But we have exemption of we have people who go from poor country to developed country and they stand. We have exceptional. We have rich people who still live in... I had a rich person who was near my village. He really, really believed in God. He supported mission. He built many people. He supported many pastors. He paid pastors with his salary. He brought people from America to preach. So long as you believe in God, he supported you even can educate you for free. We have exemption of people who know God, they will not be changed. The Bible says in Daniel 11 that those who know God will not be changed, even during difficult days. Those who know God with clarity, they will stand. It doesn't matter how difficult it will be those days. And the Bible says the difficult days of Antichrist rule and satanic wing rule, false prophet rule, and Satan rule, because Satan will rule in the world Again, it's illegal because Satan is told he's the, he's the king of this world. But his days are numbered. The Bible is one of our time. The Bible says the church of God, the revival will be during those times. Joel 2.28. The revival. Daniel 11. Daniel 12. The revival. Daniel 9. The church will be brought back to its former place of ruin. The wall of Jerusalem will be built. The church will be brought back to its former place of ruin. The former revival will come back. The first love will come back during those difficult days. Because those who know God, those God predestined, those who know they are God, even though they were drifting, going away from the God, when they realize and know the truth, the Bible says in Isaiah 35, 10, they will come back to God. Those God predestined, those who belong to God, those God has ransomed, those God has redeemed, will come back to him. Isaiah 44, they will come back to him. Isaiah 51, they will come back to you, to him. Isaiah 54, they will come back to him. Isaiah 61, they will come back to him. Isaiah 35, 10, they will come back to him. Those who know they are God, it doesn't matter how difficult it will be. There is no way this is the message you can cut the branch you are sitting on and make it. When I mean to make it, I mean heaven. Destiny. Because you can be rich. The rich man who was living with Lazaro, he thought he's okay. But when he died, he realized he was not okay. When he died and he was tormenting me here, Lazaro was living in Tata and eating dog food and eating with dog. He put dog, he put him outside with dog to eat the food of dog. The crab, the leftover that is given to God, dog, dog he was also given Lazaro. When they died both, Lazaro went to paradise, the rich man went to hell. And he was telling Abraham, I think Abraham Moses, send people to earth and tell them the hell is real. And Abraham told him, or oh, I don't know, Abraham Moses, go and even if you send, they will not hear. Even if you tell people vividly there is hell, they will not hear. And the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and Revelation and book of Daniel, that those who do wicked, they will not know because they are wickedness. Wickedness. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, because of their evil, evil, because you are not stopping to sin, because you are not stopping to do immorality, because you are not stopping to cheat, you will not know. You will not see. You will not see Jesus coming. You will not see Antichrist rule. You will not see sixes number being enforced. You will not know. And sixes is making you break the law. Break your marriage. Live in, in lies. Cheat. The Bible says clear in Daniel chapter 9, 8, 23 to 25. The lie will spread. Failing each other. People, two people will be sitting together cheating each other. People will be cheating. And the enemy will allow deception to reign, cheating to reign, intrigue to reign, cunningness, defeating each other with wisdom. 
jailing each other and they have wisdom more than you. Six, six number. Breaking the law of God. It's not a scan. Even people who are given track, even this day, people who are given track in the criminals, where do they have a track? Because we have people who are tracked by the government. Because their evil is so severe. Their evil is so severe and they are given track. To track them. To track them wherever they are. That you have a house arrest, you can't go anywhere. Whenever you come out, the GPS can show you out. Where they have the track number. Because they did evil. Because they did crime. Their crime is beyond and they have to be tracked. There's no way. Even those who be put track number is because of sinning, lying, doing evil, and you not know. And by the way, the, if you read the Bible clearly, the track, why the people say it's physical, it may be spiritual. It may even be spiritual because even Daniel did not see. Daniel was told in a version to have seen up the vision. At an appointed time, it will be known. You may not see everything. But at that time, you will know. You will know exactly what, was, what this means. You will know exactly what was the meaning of this. You know the meaning. And the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, we don't know everything. We see dim light. We don't see. We see fog. We see mist. We don't see everything. But at time will come, we'll understand everything. Aha, this was this. And even the prophecy, the people say in Daniel, those who know the truth, they know, aha, this is what Daniel was saying. Daniel 11, those who know their God, they will know this is what Daniel was saying. This is what Daniel did not understand. This is what, and you know, because you have the spirit of God. Because you have the spirit of God. There is no way you can cut the branch you're sitting on and make it. Many people have failed. We need to pray. How do you not cut the branch you're sitting on? How can you do? Jesus said, watch and pray. Pray without ceasing, in truth and in spirit. And Jesus said, there are some demons can go until you fast. Pray and fast. Some demon can go until you fast. Not only the prayer. You have to fast. Sincere fast, not, not a show of fast. Genuine fast and pray. People did sacrosh in the Bible, putting ashes on their body. When people are not uh, satisfied with the government, you see somebody climbing a building. You see somebody climbing a long post. And then they ask, what's wrong? I want my grievance to be heard. People in the Bible did sacrosh, putting ashes on their body. One time people walk naked in my country. Women try to make their grievance known. God, those who won the battle, the Bible say the saints, the true saints, the true Christian will win their battle. The kingdom of God is won by those who take stand and fight it by force. They is prayer sacro. They do all kind of crazy worship till God hear them and protect them. David was singing until clothes come out. You have to do sacred and fast. There are some things you need to fast to see. If you don't fast, you may not see. Pray and fast. You will not see. You have to pray sincerely and fast. Some demons that blind you may not go until you fast and see. Hiya. Kuben is like this. How will you not cut the branch you are sitting on? You need to play so hard. Pray so hard. In, never stop praying. When you are driving in the car, go praying. When you are cleaning the dishes, play. And say, Jesus, as I clean this cup, as I make it as white, I remove all the, the, the stain, make me clean. Play. Protect your children. As I mop this house, I plant Jesus' altar. As I sweep this house, I destroy the water. As I mop, I plant Jesus' altar. You do a sacred. Pray. Decree and declare. You will not cut the branch you're sitting on. They were not praying, the teachers of the law. They could see they are cutting the 
branch they are sitting on. You are a blasphemy. You are blaspheming God. You are calling yourself the king of the Jews. You are breaking the Sabbath law. Hearing people on Sunday, Sabbath day, Saturday. But were they praying? They were using their theological knowledge of the Bible. They were as Christian. But they didn't pray. When Jesus went to pray with his strong uh, confidence, every time we have a confidence, every time we have rifters, there are people when you call in your 11 hour, when you are stuck, if I call Peter, I'm stuck, he will send me 5,000. He will send me 10,000. There are people, even in the government, when people win elections, they choose, they choose. There are people they know, this one, in an emergency situation, he will save me. There's no way he can go against me. And most people, and you look even in the government, they were choosing their classmate. Even there's a president I know. The people he was putting in sensitive ministry position were his classmates. People you call in every hour and they save you. Jesus had some people like John, Peter. He called them to go and pray with them in the 11 hour. To pray with them. Because Jesus believed prayer, he could win the devil. The devil was trying hard to finish him. And Jesus was even saying to God, remove this cup. He was, in the 11 hour, you feel so weak. There is a politician who was very, very courageous. Very outspoken. He was feared nothing. But the day he was about to be killed, he was full of fear. And he could see, I'm in danger. You couldn't believe it's him. And he was killed. Jesus was feeling weak the same way. And he told God, remove this cup if possible. But if you are weak, let it be. All of us, you, Satan is so, don't understand the power of Satan. He can make you weak. And he, unless you pray, you can't make it. Jesus prayed and he won the battle. He went to mountain to pray. And he prayed. And he tried to tell those people, pray, please pray with me even one hour. But Satan overpowered them. Satan knew the secret of prayer. When you say, when you say, for example, when you say a certain celebrity is coming, or a powerful singer, is coming to perform in opera house in KICC is it will be full that venue will be full there's a way in Kenya people go to carnival to see fun things full it's good to be happy sometimes and enjoy fun is good it make you improve your well-being and people who are happy they live longer but my point is, when you say we have a prayer night, nobody come. Prayer day. Tuesday is the day of prayer. Nobody come. No, people are not bad. It's certain. Certain makes sure you can pray. That is the only way you can win me. I will make sure I will give you heaviness. You can, you can feel the need for prayer. Nobody want to pray. So when you pray and fast, Pray without ceasing. Apply the word of God in your life. Walk with the spiritual armor of God. It's in, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to, to, verse, verse 10 to 21 to 20. When you wear the armor of God, when you read the word of God and you worship God in truth and in spirit, when you pray without ceasing, when you pray in truth and in spirit, you will never cut the branch you're sitting on. In your marriage, you will follow the biblical principle of marriage. In the work, you do the way God says. Work like you're working for me. When you get money, you will always give 10% and you will never lack. There are so many kids who don't give 10%. Then they wonder why, why I get a lot of money but I take to hospital. I get a lot of money, they get lost. In, I get some fine, I get fine in the road. I get a very big bill I didn't expect. I take, I waste all money in my children's hospital because you don't tithe. You are cutting the branch you are sitting on. Know the truth to be free. So that deprive you from the truth. If you worship God sincerely, 
genuinely and do what the God says, you will not remove Jesus in your life. Somebody will help you. You are praying and you didn't get for years somebody to marry you. Somebody gave you olive branch and made you to marry you. But when you got children, when you got what you wanted, when the, you settled, you left that person. There are so many men who go to church, they don't have, they need a good girl. Most people go to church to fight good women because they don't want to marry these who are rules. When that woman accepts you and you are settled in marriage, then you start doing the same way, going uh, prosmuscus living and sleeping with other women, cutting the branch you're sitting on. And then you wonder, why that if it have no meaning? Why I have a so problem? No money. I don't have money. I don't have job. When I get money, it doesn't help me. I am never happy. You are cutting the branch you are sitting on. The branch that you sat on, that God you, you sat on to be your support, you cut. That man who gave you an olive branch, you are fasting and fasting for a man. He just gave you olive branch. And let me tell you the truth. Jesus said, Jesus said, if you plant in a house, stand on sand, on a roof foundation, will fall. If a house is well, the, the, the foundation, you build the foundation very well. You build the foundation very well. You make sure you dig the ground, put strong foundation, that house will stand. Many houses, when you want to build, you have to seek even the government. As even in my country, there is some region. The government has to wear, with this house sink? Because some areas sink. The government have to measure and see whether that house can sink. There are so many high buildings, they are falling because they are not following the right protocol. So the government has to give you permission and check the, even the structure, how you're going to build to make sure the house has a strong foundation. Otherwise, so many houses are falling because they are not following the right protocol. They are, they are have a, a they, are, they are using shortcut. And government is put there by God to make sure people are following the right protocol, to build the house in the right way. They have to check and make sure that house will be built in strong foundation. Where I come from, in Kenya and Akuru, the, house, the area sink because of volcanicity. You can build in Nakuru town. We don't have tall buildings like Nairobi because the area can sink. There's a lot of volcanicity. The truth is, if a house is stand on a strong ground, it stand. So, for example, I'll give an example in marriage because this is where the devil fights so much. There are so many people who plant their root of marriage in sand, not in the foundation of biblical that God said. I want to get a man to give me children. I want to get a man for protection, a cover, a status, I have a husband. I want to get somebody who can make me come out of poverty. When, when you in Facebook and people see you are in Australia, you're in London, they keep telling you, can you marry me? I love you so much. But they want somebody to come remove them out of their poverty. And when they come here, when they get job, they leave you because the foundation is somebody who will take me abroad. Somebody will give me children. When the children come, you will not wonder why. What is wrong with this man, woman? What is wrong with this man? I saw a man who married a woman after he got papers. He left and ran away and left him with the two children and went and brought her girlfriend, his girlfriend. Long foundation, cutting the branch you are sitting on. And don't think they are happy. You will never be happy by taking Satan. You will never be happy. Tell me where in the Bible somebody did evil and was happy. Judas killed Jesus and died the next, Satan finished him the next day. Those who engineer evil for Daniel, they were themselves eaten. Those who cast the man of God, Atuimutu, he's going with, a, he's an old man, they were eaten by beasts. Those who are watching bars were all killed. There's no way you can do evil and survive. Satan has no free gift. His first thing is to steal you, good things. The next thing is to destroy you, to steal your Christianity and then finish you. 
Long foundations have been put in marriage. That's why we wonder why marriage doesn't work. Because people have wrong reason for marriage. They think they are right. I'm not saying they are evil, those people are doing that. They don't know what they are doing. Because they don't know the Bible. Marriage is for companionship. It's not for children. Children is part of marriage. Children is part of marriage. Cover is part of marriage. But don't get a man a cover. When I get a cover, no sex anymore. I wear long clothes. I'll never shower. I'll never entertain my husband. But the Bible say, don't live away together for long in sexual relationship. Even when you fast in sex, stay even maybe one day. That is the book of Corinthians. But how many people live with their spouse, either husband, either it's a husband or a man? They can go even year and another year and another, without even meeting ever. And what happened? He God put another husband outside, another woman outside. Never win, and you know win, even when you put another one outside. There is no one win. Both of them, they will be just, unless you start with Jesus, you will win. Whether your husband is with you or not, you will win. Whether you have a, your wife or not, you will win when you start with Jesus. And a good example is Joseph. Satan put him in long loot. He made it because he stood with Jesus. Daniel realized the evil plan on him. He went to upper room to pray. God delivered him. Three you said, we don't know even whether God will save, you, will save us. Even if we put seven hotter times, fire, fire seven times hotter, we will not worship idol. God saved them and they didn't know they would be saved. Elijah stood and said, even though all the prophets worship Baal, all the prophets of God, they worship Baal. I will stand with God and God delivered him and manifest his power in Mount Carmel contest. In the book of Kings chapter 18, You need to know the truth. Standing on wrong foundation. Many people, it's because of lack of knowledge. You plant the foundation in the wrong place. How many people have gone abroad and left God? Because I was a Christian, because I, I was brought by a family that was Christian. I was so much praying because I didn't have money. I was fasting to get a visa to go to abroad. Not because... I believe in Jesus as the Savior of the world, as the king, coming King, as the my God who give me life and well-being. My God who came to deliver me. But they, they are praying God because of needs. Yes, it's good to pray for needs, but know why you are Christian. Know Christ. Show Christ, live Christ. Many people, they worship God because of needs. They don't leave Christ. They leave Christ because of needs. When the needs are fulfilled, they don't leave Christ anymore. You need to know the truth. We need job. We need family. We need money to pay rent. We need money to buy mortgage. But remember, you are short to live in this world. You are temporal. When you die, you either go to hell or heaven. You have to worship God for future. You are created to worship God and to enter heaven. To enter heaven. You are created so that you can enter the kingdom of God. It is the truth that makes you free from satanic stronghold and lies thinking about how you be rich, how you build houses, how you try to save and have a lot of future retirement. And maybe even you not reach that retirement. We need to buy a house for our retirement. Otherwise, I will not have somewhere to live. But the Bible says in Matthew 6, that three, seek God first, put God first. Whether you want to have a retirement place, whether you want to, you want to children, whether you have marriage, seek God first. Put God first in everything. Don't put Mortgage first. Look for mortgage, but let God be the center of your life. Same person, Israel Houston, say, Jesus are the center of my life. When you put Jesus at the center of my life. Listen to that song of Israel Houston. He said, Jesus are the center of my life. 
put Jesus at the center of your life. And when you put Jesus at the center of your life, you never fall. Cutting the branch you're sitting on, you will fall. It is Jesus we are sitting on. When a certain tried to prove beyond him reason or doubt, he is the king of kings. He proved. He is the one who said, and the Bible says he's the king of the world. But the Bible says clearly, I have already overcome for you. Why the Saturn pretend to be the king of the world, masquerade to be the angel of light. Book of Corinthians say he pretend to be the light of giver in this world. Jesus is the true right giver. That is just fake from Saturn. He says he's the king of the world. But we know Revelation 19.16 says Jesus is the king of kings and lord of lords. But Saturn is saying he's the one. We need to know it's Jesus who gives us meaningful life. It's Jesus who gives life with a meaning and purpose. It's Jesus who makes us happy. It's Jesus who gives us peace, strength, ultimate peace. It's Jesus who gives us life with meaning and purpose. It is Jesus who makes us satisfied whether we have money or not. We have so many politicians crying, they don't sleep. Yes, they have everything because they don't have Jesus. How many politicians cry in the TV because they lose their seat? How many kill each other because of position? How many they don't sleep, always doing campaign, try to win a seat? Yet, if they stay in their house without working, they can live forever and have money. But they can't, they are not satisfied. But with Jesus, you are satisfied whether you have money or not. It's only Jesus who makes us contented. With Jesus, you can be contented. The branch that we are sitting on is Jesus. We take the devil through our own wisdom without knowing, listening with your own wisdom, but it's Jesus who gives us life with a meaning and purpose. Many people, as I was saying at the beginning, they think marriage will give me meaning for life. They didn't see that meaning for life. They divorce even. Some other kill each other. Other thought children will give them meaning for life. Children fail them. There are so many children who have failed their parents and where they think we will declare our children and they will help us. And they forget their parents. There are so many children who forget their parents. Africa we believe in helping our parents and our relatives. But there are so many who are blessed and they don't remember their parents. They only come to their funeral with big cars and buy expensive coffin. But they didn't help them. They didn't help them in their, when they are in poverty. They may even have died because of disease. They couldn't afford the bill. But when the parents die, they come with big cars and buy expensive coffin for them. But they didn't help them. Many people thought riches will help them. Many people thought when they are rich, they will be happy. But they become more unhappy. It is Jesus who makes us ultimate joy. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 that when you have spirit of God, you have joy. You have peace. Little peace. Little joy. But the rest, money gives fake joy. Marriage gives fake joy. It's when you have Jesus that marriage will be beautiful. When both of you will worship Jesus sincerely, your marriage will be sweet. Your marriage will be very sweet. Never cut Jesus out of your life. Otherwise, you'll never be happy. You'll never be happy. Never reach Jesus. Jesus is the branch you are sitting on. Jesus is the branch you are sitting on. Live and believe in Jesus and you will never fall. You will never feel unhappy. You will never fall because Jesus is the true branch. Is the true branch, the Bible says. And God is the vine dresser, is the who, who prune. If you don't bear fruit, he'll prune you. You fall. So believe in Jesus and you'll never fall. Jesus is a true vine. Jesus is a true branch. Jesus is the branch you're sitting on. Believe in Jesus and you will never fall. 
Walk with Jesus and you will all win the devil. You will never fall out of your position. You will never fall out of where you are sitting on. You will never fall where you are sitting on. You are sitting on Jesus. All people are sitting on Jesus. The Bible says in Revelation 12, the devil deceived whole world. He read the whole world astray. He make them sit on his branches and they fell. And what happened? Revelation 20, they all be put to hell, fire. Judgment of the dead, judgment of Satan is in Revelation 20. They will go, go be put to internal fire. The false prophet who deceived many people, deceiving them under the power of Antichrist and Satan, and Antichrist himself, they took the devil sitting on Satan branch, they will fell on Revelation 19. The Bible says their bed is there. The heavenly warrior riding the horse, white horse, Jesus, will finish them. And they will be destroyed. The Antichrist and his cheating wing will go first in Revelation 19. Then Satan will be ruled later for a for few years. Then he will be finished in Revelation 20. Jesus is the true branch we are sitting on. Never cut Jesus out of your life and you will never fall. You will never live a life without meaningful life. You will never live a life without a sense of belonging. Whether you have problem or not, you always feel you are, you are contented. You will never fall. You will never go away. When you, are, when you have problem in marriage, when you have problem in anything, you never fall. Of course, marriage has challenges. All marriages have challenges. But when you are sitting in Jesus with your husband, all of you are sitting in the Jesus all the time, you will work out your marriage. You will, you will have differences. You will talk to agree. You walk the talk. You talk the walk and you make it. You will disagree and agree, agree to disagree. And finally you will agree because uh, you are sitting on Jesus. But if you are sitting on the long branches, you will fall. Your mind will be broken. Or you may live together, same house, but you're not together. There are so many people living together in the house, but they are not together. Living in the same house is not marriage. It is in the mind. Marriage is in the mind. There's so many, many people who are living together, but they later realize they were cheated. But somebody was so romantic. But you realize it was not for you, but you decide to stay. Some people say, I will stay. I can't live without my children. So many people everywhere, they live in marriage, but there's nothing. Marriage is in the mind. Marriage is in the mind. Marriage is in your mind. It's what you believe. This is my spouse. What you believe, it make you who you are. If you say this is my husband, this is my wife, even if you struggle, you make it. Never cut Jesus out of your life. And you will never fall. Forever and ever. You stand firm. And Jesus said in Philippians 1.6, the good work Jesus started in you, he will bring it to compression. You will never fall. You make it to heaven. You make it in marriage. You make it in life. You never live in stress. You never fall because you are sitting on Jesus. Hallelujah. Never cut Jesus out of your life.